In this video, we'll review how to factor trinomials and other polynomials with leading coefficients. So let's look at our two examples. The one on the left is just a 1x squared, so this trinomial is going to be pretty easy to factor. The one on the right has a 4x squared. It's got a leading coefficient of 4. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult because I cannot just factor out the 4, as 4 will not go into 3 evenly. So when I do this, I'm going to have to do a little bit different approach. So let's begin with the easier one. If I have x squared minus 2x minus 15, one way to do this may be use the diamond problems. We look for factors that multiply to be our constant of negative 15, and add to be that middle term, that x value, of negative 2. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 15 and add to be negative 2 would be negative 5 and 3. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, and negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. This helps me to find my factored form. My factored form of the x squared minus 2x minus 15 would be the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. Now, if you're ever sure that you, maybe I want to go back and look at my work, I can always go back and check it by just distributing. If I distribute the x into that x plus 3, I get x squared plus 3x. Distributing the negative 5, I get negative 5x and then minus 15. Combining like terms, the 3x minus 5x is negative 2x, and this becomes x squared minus 2x minus 15, which was the original problem. This shows me that we actually have the factored form correct. The factored form would be the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. Now, like I said, the second example is a little bit more difficult. In this example, I don't have a 1x squared, and I don't have an ability to make it a 1x squared without getting fractions. So instead, I'm going to use a diamond problem and box approach. To begin, I place the first term in the first box and the last term in the last box. The other two boxes are where I'm going to split up my negative 8x. The way to figure out how to organize this is to do the diamond problem. But here, I've got to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to take the first and last terms and multiply together. So 4 times 3 gives me a product of 12. I'm looking for two products, or sorry, two, sorry. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 12, but add to be negative 8. I know that my factors have to be both be negative because negative times negative would give me a positive 12, and a negative and a negative added together would give me a negative 8. So in this case, I'm thinking negative 6 and negative 2. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. Negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8. I'll now write these into the other boxes and use x's. My negative 8x is really going to be my negative 6x and my negative 2x added together. So basically, I've found a way to organize that middle term. The negative 8x is spread over the two boxes using negative 6x and negative 2x. Now, I'm going to go through my terms 4x squared and my minus 6x, and I'm going to look for a greatest common factor. The biggest thing that goes into both of those would be 2x. So I'll write that 2x in front. Now, to complete this, I'm going to find the dimensions of the boxes that give me the area inside. So up top, I know that 2x times something has to give me 4x squared. Well, 2x times another 2x would make 4x squared. And then I need something that multiplies to be 2x times something to give me negative 6x. Well, 2x times negative 3 would make negative 6x. Now, along the bottom side, I know that 2x times something has to give me negative 2x. Well, here I need a negative 1. Now, it's always a good idea to check your work. I'm going to multiply my last terms, which is the negative 1 and the negative 3, and see if it gives me the, the part that's in the bottom right-hand corner. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3, which tells me that I have my factored form probably correct. So here, the factored form would be the quantity 2x minus 3 times the quantity 2x minus 1. Now, I can always go back and check my work just like we did before. If I distribute 2x times 2x, I get 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Combining like terms, we get the 4x squared minus 8x plus 3, which was our original problem. So this confirms that the factored form should be the quantity 2x minus 3 times the quantity 2x minus 1. Now let's take a look at a couple harder examples. Here I've got a few more worked out. Go ahead and try the first two, and it's going to be like what we just did. Pause the video, work them out, and when you're ready, resume the video to check your work. I'll give you a minute. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work these problems out. On problems 1 and 2, I look at them, and there's no way to remove it, the um, coefficient in order to make these 1x squareds. 3 will not divide into 14 evenly, so I can't make this a 1x squared. So instead, I'm going to use my diamond problem and box approach. To begin, first term, first box, last term, last box. I'm going to split up the negative 14x's using my diamond problem. 
multiplying first times last, I'm looking for a product of negative 15 and a sum of negative 14. The two factors that'll give me this are negative 15 and 1. Putting these into the boxes, one of them's a 1x and the other's a negative 15x. And again, it doesn't matter which is which, it'll give me the same thing if I put the negative 15x on the top and the 1x on the bottom left. It doesn't matter. Looking for my greatest common factor at the top, the only thing that's going to go into 3x squared and 1x is just a 1x. Finishing it out, I'll look for the dimensions of the box. x times 3x makes 3x squared, and x times 1 makes a 1x. Along the sides, 3x times x is good that 3x squared, and 3x times negative 5 makes negative 15x. Checking my work, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, which confirms that I'm doing this right. The factored form would then be the quantity, 3x plus 1, times the quantity x minus 5. On the second one, I can't make this a 1x squared because 4 won't go into 1 evenly, so instead I'm going to do my diamond problem and box approach. First term, first box. Last term, last box. Taking those two and multiplying together, 4 times negative 14 is negative 56. So I'm looking for factors that multiply to be negative 56, but add to be 1. This would be negative 7 and 8. Negative 7 times 8 is negative 56, and negative 7 plus 8 is 1. Moving these over, I'm now going to look for my greatest common factors. The biggest term that goes into both 4x squared and negative 7x is just going to be a 1x. x times 4x would make 4x squared, and x times negative 7 would be a negative 7x. Along the sides, x times 4x made the 4x squared, and 2 times 4x would be 8x. Now let's check our work. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, so we're setting this up right. The factored form would be the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity 4x minus 7. Now what do you notice different about problems 3 and 4? Hopefully you're recognizing that these aren't trinomials. Instead, they're binomials. If they're binomials, I'm probably going to look for either a common factor or I'm going to look for some type of difference of squares. Now the fact that I see it's an x squared and I recognize that both 25 and 36 are perfect squares leads me to think that this is going to be just a difference of squares. So here I've got a binomial with a leading coefficient that I can't factor out. So I know that 5 times 5 is 25 and 6 times 6 is 36, so this will tell me what my difference of squares is going to be. It's going to be the quantity 5x plus 6 and 5x minus 6. Using the same idea on number 4, again it's a binomial separated by a minus sign and they both have squares. I'm looking at a difference of squares. I know that 11 times 11 is 121 and 2 times 2 is 4. Now both of these have variables that are squared, so when I set it up, I'm going to say it's 11x plus 2y and 11x minus 2y. If I was to distribute it out, 11x times 11x is 121x squared. 11x times negative 2y would be a negative 22xy, but it's going to be canceled out by when I do the next distribution. 2y times 11x is positive 22xy, and that negative 22xy and positive 22xy cancel. The last piece would be the 2y times the negative 2y, which is negative 4y squared. This would be 121x squared minus 4y squared. So this is done correctly. All right, hopefully this helped you how to factor with leading coefficients, and thank you for watching.